Hi all, Plantside Agent here. Today we're going to take a look at a alcohol burner that is built inside of a mini Altoy tin. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. Uh, I got the idea for this from uh, Waypoint Survival on his channel. And uh, I'll go ahead and put a link to the video where he made his version. Of this stove, uh, his is a little bit different than than mine. Um, for the uh, wick material, he used uh, the insulating rope that you usually put around uh, uh, wood stoves and that sort of thing. And I use uh, carbon felt, which uh, I got I bought online. Get little chunks of it. And the uh, for the mesh. He used uh, part of a stainless steel uh, sink drain uh, that he cut out. And I used stainless steel mesh, which I got in a uh, part of a uh, plastic welding <laughs> kit. So it worked out really well. So um, for mine, uh, I went ahead and I painted the uh, painted with some automotive uh, engine paint, 500 degree. But it looks like it's <laughs> on some of my tests that I've already done on this. Um, Looks like it's starting to burn off, but no biggie. But anyway, let's. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you how I did mine, and uh, pop this out. Come on, without deforming it too much. How many more times I can yank this out of here and be completely worthless? But um, yeah, this is just stainless steel mesh, and for the uh, wicking material. Now the wicking material. Is used to soak up the alcohol so that when you it won't spill when you tip it tip it over so anyway so what I got here is I had uh, a bunch of scraps left over from making uh, fancy feast stoves so I waste not want not so I just decided to use some of that to uh, cram it in like I bought most of it to to make these fancy feast stoves which have uh, carbon felt as the wicking agent um, now the the carbon felt, if you don't know, is uh, plumbers use it, and that's they usually use it for a backing, like when they're uh, uh, soldering, like copper tubing, they'll put it on the back behind it, so that when they're got their torch got their torch going on it, it don't set the rest of the house on fire. So, but uh, it's kind of hard to find. I think it's a little expensive if you buy, and it's quite a bit if you're not making a lot of stuff. Um, so I just ordered it off mine off of eBay, and I think the you know, they're just probably scraps from uh, manufacturing that some guy gathers up and, and resells. But for me, it's it's plenty, it, and it's a lot cheaper than buying the full package. So anyway, I just stuff this in here. Oh, oops, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Oh, another thing you have to do is there's the there's the hinge on the uh, Altoy tin and that goes all the way through so what you uh, need to do is you need to seal that up if you don't obviously it's going to leak out of this hinge and you're only going to get about this much fuel which oops uh, which isn't going to be enough for uh, you to uh, burn to get a boil on so what you get you get some of this uh, aluminum or metal back tape and I got the giant economy roll. God, this would probably be a two or three lifetime supply for me. But I got could have gotten the small roll, but with the price of it, I just you know the cheap in me said, well, you know, I can get uh, five times as much for <laughs> the same price. So anyway, a better deal. So I just got the big one. I'll find something to use it for. Uh, anyway, so you uh, you get a piece of that and you cut it off the same height as the. Uh, Huh. You know what? Looking at this, looks like a shrink a little bit. Uh, you cut it off at the same height as the inside of the stove. Dog on it. <laughs> the inside of the stove below the the lip here. Just paste that on there, so that'll that'll hold uh, alcohol. Then you just uh, stuff your uh, wicking agent, whatever you use. There's other stuff you could use. Uh, you could use a wick from a candle or. A, like a lantern wick, or uh, you know, just anything that would be a wicking agent that, that would, like, say, soak up the alcohol so it doesn't spill out when you tip it. Then I just uh, cut this out to the size of the uh, tin here, 
Let me just pop that back in. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Not much of a stove, so folds up nice and nice and compact. So uh, let's see. Uh, Waypoint Survival. He used his as part of a. Uh, oh, it's right here. As part of this uh, collapsible wood stove from a full size Altoid tin, and he fits it inside inside the tin with. Uh, he has some little miniature bottles of. Uh, of alcohol he uses and makes kind of a kit out of it but I'm not going to do that I'm not going to hunt around for those small bottles I think he said he would only get about a half an ounce which is a fuel in his little bottles and that's not enough to boil two cups of water so this will hold just shy of an ounce of fuel when you seal up the back so I just what it is I, I measured an ounce I started pouring it in and uh, it started to overflow before I completely emptied the ounce but that little less than an ounce will boil water. I'm going to run some boil tests after I'm done here, but generally, it uh, if you get the get it in the sweet spot, which is usually about an inch from the from the top of the burner to the uh, bottom of the pot, you're going to be looking at around nine minutes for boil time. Nine ten minutes depend on the temperature of the water. So anyway, let's see. Uh, so if you just if you want to see the uh, the the boil tests on this stove uh, then uh, go ahead and stay tuned if not then we'll see you next time okay I think I'm set up for the boil test uh, one thing about this one is uh, I'm going to use it inside the little wood stove and uh, but the the height of the, the uh, flame is going to be the optimum on a lot of wood stoves especially like the uh, the Trangias and those fancy feast is about around an inch between the uh, the burner top of the burner and the uh, and your pot. This one's a little bit more. It's uh, it's like two inches. So I'm not sure about uh, how that's going to affect the performance. I actually did do a burn test on this before when I first put it together, and i I used uh, I used this setup. I, I haven't I. Uh, a pot stand made out of uh, hardware cloth and I put it on top of a fancy feast can to kind of get it up to that optimum one inch and did a burn on it and uh, actually it did a boil in nine minutes and seven seconds and the run time was uh, 12 minutes and 25 seconds which is which is respectable so we'll see if if it makes any kind of a difference with this one I'm kind of curious I this is only the second time I've run a burn on this so Let's go ahead and light it off, and then I'll put the uh, timer. I got uh, I got uh, two cups, 16 ounces of uh, water at 52 degrees, and uh, we'll go ahead and get this show on the road. There we go. Looks like it's on its way, and I'm going to go ahead and put the pot on it's nice and stable I don't think I'd put on much a, a much bigger pot but you know <laughs> I don't know how that would work out so let me uh, oops better hit the timer quit yapping there we go so uh, actually warmed up a little bit while I was sitting there yakking not not getting the thing set up let me I'll go ahead and put this over here see so hopefully you can see it but we're up to 58 degrees after a little over 15 seconds. Okay. There we go. So what I'm going to do real quick, just so you can look at the flame pattern, if we can. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Let me, I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to turn the light off here in my studio, a.k.a. garage. <laughs> and uh, I'll bring the bring the uh, camera down and let you look at the uh, burn pattern <clears throat> oops I don't have to yell I got the mic on me <laughs> sometimes I forget I bought a remote mic so I want to yell I try to yell at the phone and it's throwing out quite a bit of oops shouldn't have gone too fast there you go it's cranking out quite a bit of flame Okay. 
So what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and turn this off until we get a little bit closer to a burn, to a boil, and uh, bring you back then. Okay, we're coming up on the time that I had a boil on my first test, and that was at 9 minutes and 7 seconds. You can see we're right there, and we're at 172 degrees. So if anybody ever has any doubts that distance from the pot with your alcohol burner makes it has any effect, it does. So this one is, like I said, almost two inches from the top of the burner to the to the pot. Like I say, the last time I did this, it burned for about 12 minutes, but I have a feeling that uh, you know, the flame's really starting to die back. So I think the usefulness is just about gone. I might have had a little less fuel in there. It's kind of hard to measure. When I, I just poured it in until I kind of saw it starting to come up to the uh, lip of the burner. We're not really gaining more ground. The flame is coming down. Yeah, it's in fact, it's just about ready to go out. So we're at about uh, 10 minutes and uh, 18 seconds. Yeah, write that down. I can find a pencil here. I should have had this out in the first place. Uh, so we'll just say 10 minutes and 18 seconds and it got to 173 degrees. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to reset up and uh, I'm going to try uh, using a different uh, pot stand to see uh, what kind of uh, boil performance we get. Okay, I'm just about set up to do another boil test. Uh, one little note on this stove is that when you put your wicking material, whether it's carbon felt or as Wick Point Survival used, it was a uh, a rope, an insulating rope that's used on wood stoves that, that would work as a wicking. But anything that would be good wicking material that would hold the uh, fuel in and won't let it slop out. That's the, that's why you want the wicking stuff. But on this one, I noticed I got it smashed down a little bit closer, so I can't hold quite as much fuel. You don't want it to be liquid and floating in here because then if you bump it, it'll slop over and, you know, you'll have a real mess on your hands. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead with the original setup on my test, and that's with the uh, Fancy Feast, a uh, hardware cloth pot holder, and, uh, which gets this a little bit closer to the bottom of the pot. If we look at this uh, measurement here, you know, we're looking at... Uh, just about oh, looks like an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, somewhere around there. So we're in the in the sweet spot zone. So uh, it, one reason I didn't want to use this again is after a while this this thing gets a little uh, flaky, <laughs> and it's just about the size of this pot. So I didn't want to have any accidents, but I'll just have to pay attention to make sure it doesn't lean on me. It has already leaned a little bit. So anyway, uh, let me add a little bit of fuel here. I don't know if you guys are interested in watching me pour fuel in here. If it's a disaster, I'll edit it out. <laughs> Just kind of watch it to make sure. Yeah, it looks like about as good as it's going to get. Or as good as I want to get it so it doesn't spill over and I have to wait for it to dry out. So, anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll fire the stove up. I've got, uh, again, Two cups of water prepped. It's at 51 degrees. This is this is the temperature coming out of the tap in the house. <laughs> so we had cold water here in the winter time. At uh, so let me uh, fire this off. Oof. And set this on. It's a pretty close between the top of the uh, lid of the stove and the pot stand. There we go. Whoops! Again, let's start it. <laughs> it heats up pretty well. Heats up pretty quick. It's not the water so much as the end of the probe is sitting on the bottom of the pot. It's on its way, and uh, as we get a little bit close to either uh, a boil or, or burnout, I'll. Uh, Open this back up. Okay, let me show you how the burn pattern on this. If you notice the flame closer, it really covers the pot. Also, I noticed when it was in the uh, the other little folding stove that the flame was really affected by just any kind of a light breeze, even indoors. I'd see it moving kind of off to the side away from the uh, the bottom of the stove. So definitely uh, it pays to get that inch 
it's the quarter sweet spot. Okay, we're getting close. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. We're at uh, 10 minutes and uh, 45 seconds, and we're at 201, 202. Looks like the flame is eh, starting to die down a bit. I think I have a little less alcohol in it than the first time. So as it starts to get toward the end of the fuel load, the uh, the the heat output drops down, so you're not getting quite the performance out of the stove. I don't know if we'll uh, actually get to a, a boil or not. The flame is starting to die down. I think if I could hold, had a little bit more fuel in there, I definitely would uh, made the uh, boil by now. I think what I might do is just add, uh, pop that screen out and add just a little more working material. That way I can make sure I get the fuel load right up to the uh, very top of the, the inside rolled edge. And then it will uh, boil. Like I say, the first time I used this, I got a boil in uh, 9 minutes and 7 seconds. And it uh, could have been warmer that day. I didn't take any. <laughs> oh, no, here we are. Yeah, the water temperature was at 62. So that's a 10 degree difference. That would have made a big difference, too. I would say if you get enough fuel in here, you could get a boil much faster. If you had a little bit of a windscreen, that would probably help, too, to direct more of the heat into the stove. So we're just about out of fuel here at 12 minutes. And actually, the first time, I cut it off at 12.25. So actually, I had about the same amount of fuel. So that 10-degree water temperature uh, did make a difference. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, wait till it gets up to about 62 degrees before I set the timer on another burn to see if it's the same. But if I do that, that'll be off camera and I probably won't. It'll be a mystery for you guys to, to try yourself. So anyway, I would say that generally this will bring a, this little stove will bring two cups of water to a boil. It's a kind of a cute little stove and uh, I think it, would, it works great. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and... Uh, We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.